Admiral stay on course and give us insight to the unique culture in Admiral Group. So please welcome Henry Engelhardt. Good afternoon. I would imagine that everyone is here because they want where they work to be a great place to work, or probably most of your, your cases, a greater place to work. Very unfortunately, I don't have any simple ways to uh, magically allow everyone in this audience to create a great place to work. All I can really do is tell you what Admiral has done and how we've done it, and hope that somewhere in this story is something useful you can take back to your business or organization. Today, Admiral Group is a FTSE 100 company, that means one of the 100 largest publicly quoted companies in the UK. With market capitalization of around 3.4 billion pounds, we're headquartered in Cardiff, Wales. We employ, we employ some uh, 3,000 people in South Wales, and nearly 1,000 people in our operations outside the UK. We have 13 brands actively trading in six countries, our turnover for 2009 was, for the first time in our history, more than one million pounds. And that money comes from more than two million customers. And we make money. We made 216 million pounds in 2009, up from 202 million in 2008. Not bad, eh? But you might wonder, what in the world does Admiral Group do? Well, very simply, we sell car insurance to private individuals. Our two million customers are mostly in the UK. But we've recently launched operations in Spain, Germany, Italy, uh, and the US. We operate from a number of brands. In the UK, we're Admiral, Diamond, Elephant, Bell, and Gladiator Commercial. In Spain, we're Balumba. Germany, we're Admiral Direct. Italy is Conte. And in the US, we're Elephant Auto Insurance. We're also a leader in insurance price comparison through Confuse.com in the UK, Rastriator in Spain, and our two newest additions to the group, the Lakes in France and Chiarezza in Italy. Our growth has been consistent over time. This is one of my all-time favorite charts. We've grown every year in our history, and all of this growth has been organic. We've also won a lot of awards along the way. We're the only three-time winners of the Welsh Company of the Year Award. We were Business of the Year in the UK 2004, Employer of the Year in the UK 2005, and we've been in the Great Places to Work European Top 100 list all eight years that it's been run, and if I understood correctly, we're the only firm uh, to, to have that to honor uh, being in the top 50 of the biggest companies um, category all eight years. So, sorry Microsoft. <laughs> um, so, what's all that got to do with the price of eggs? Well, if you rewind the story to 17 years, 4 months, 19 days, uh, 3 hours and 8 minutes, um, you'll find a company that hadn't started trading yet. We launched Admiral onto an unsuspecting world January 2nd, 1993 at 9 o'clock. We were 57 people that first day, just one brand, we had no customers. Today, we're a lot bigger. How did we get from A to B? I'll be damned if I know. Back setting up in 1992, we did have, did we, back setting up in 1992, did we have some driving vision of growing into a FTSE 100 company, a 3.5 billion pound company. In our first year, our turnover was 18 million pounds. Now we do that every six days. Did we really see that coming? Um, analysts predict that we'll make around 250 million pounds in 2010. That's almost 700,000 pounds a day. Was that possibly part of the plan back in 1993? Well, we got it quickly, and it has taken us just a couple more years to triple that. So if we didn't do it via some all-consuming vision, how did we do it? Well, the honest answer is one step at a time. It's really very difficult to try and sum up 18 plus years of setting up and running a business into sound bites of success. But if I try to step back, and with the luxury of hindsight, try to identify things we did that helped us to this point, 
I have to say there are about five things <laughs> that I focus on. And the first one is focus. We sell car insurance. We haven't tried to go beyond our core competence. We think about car insurance all the time. Many of our competitors do a lot of different insurances, and so you know maybe Wednesday afternoons from, from 3 to 4.30 is car insurance time, and that's when they think about it. All we think about is car insurance. Second, no Superman complex. The management team is confident, but has never had a Superman complex. I've been in organizations which have done something well and therefore thought they could do everything well. And, and, but what, what happened was, once they started to do other things they, that they actually didn't do so well, they got distracted and didn't even do the one thing that they thought they did well in the first place very well. Good ideas to meet specific needs. I don't like the idea of being known as an innovative company. I don't think you really wake up in the morning and stretch and say, hmm, today I think I'll call a meeting and we'll come up with three really good innovative ideas. It doesn't work that way. From my experience, necessity really is the mother of invention. Good ideas are more easily generated when one thinks of problems. Good ideas are the solutions. For instance, we saw that UK customers were spending a lot of time going into website after website, completing the same question set over and over again to get multiple quotes for their car insurance. Customers had a problem. Looking for car insurance was actually very time consuming. So we came up with a solution, Confuse.com, where customers enter their details once, and in a few seconds, get 30 or so prices from around the market. Fourth thing on the list is having good information and having, and having the ability to use it. Knowing your business inside out is really key. And that, to us, means measure, 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 measure everything. Numbers are absolutely crucial to success. Knowledge is key, and numbers unlock that knowledge. So we do try and measure absolutely anything and everything we can. But once you get the numbers, you have to be able to use them. You have to be able to challenge them. You have to be efficient with them. And you've got to be comfortable with them. You've got to be clever so you don't get fooled, because numbers can fool you. And you've got to understand what numbers are trying to tell you. You've also got to be very ready to read them objectively. They don't always tell you what you want to hear, and you've got to avoid interpreting them as you'd like them to be and see them for what they really are. We have a staff general meeting. Every year we get all the people together. We have to do it in several shows, mind. But we get them all together, and we deliver about an hour, an hour and a half's worth of messages. Very important. Everybody, at least on one day, gets exactly the same message. We do a company update where we get about 100 members of staff together each month and update them on progress. Department meetings, which we measure. We measure how often they're held. We measure the quality of them. Team meetings, the same. One-on-one -on -one meetings. We, we insist that all these things go on. <coughs> Friendly forums, where about eight members of staff get together with a senior manager every month. We do constant surveys. We do our own annual survey, which we've been doing virtually from the beginning. But we also enter uh, uh, contests like the Great Places to Work and, and use that measurement to feedback to staff. Tea parties, round tables, many of the managers do these very informal gatherings, again, six, eight people from around their department or maybe around the company, and just sit and chat. And it might be a chat about what good movies are playing, or it might be a chat about what's wrong with the canteen or, or what's happening in the business. Internet chats. I do a lot of internet chats. I'll go on. Four or five hundred people will log in, they can ask me absolutely any question, boom, I type out the answer, hit the button, off it goes, get the next question, keep moving. It's a, a fantastic way to, to let people ask me what's on their mind. And these questions range from the, the very simple um, question about uh, which sport team I like, or uh, more complex questions about why we've entered this market and which markets will we be going after next. We have a business exchange on our internet. That's a great, it's turned out to be a great piece of technology, a little business forum. Anybody can go in and log in a question or a, a comment, and then anybody else can go in and reply to it. So we get people writing in, uh, staff putting in things about like, you know, why do certain modifications um, carry an extra tariff? 
Uh, when other modifications don't, and somebody will come back and answer, or maybe the guy from the pricing department will answer, or why don't we enter the bike scheme and, and, uh, and subsidize uh, bike purchase for, for staff so they can bike to work? That was a big one, and, and we ended up changing what we do based on, on, that, um, on that business exchange. Many of the managers have their own blogs. Um, we have managers meeting on a monthly basis. We take uh, the main points out of that meeting, and the supervisors have to read that, those points to every member of staff. It can't be delivered by email, it can't be dropped on a chair. They actually have to read it to every member of staff. So from these main meetings, the main points, every member of staff finds out what they were. Managers visiting departments monthly. Our most senior managers get together monthly. We draw a department out of a hat, and then we go and sit in that department for a couple of hours. We get back together again later in the day, and we compare notes on exactly what we've seen. And we never, never fail to learn something from these visits. No matter how long you've been in the business, how long you've walked around, whatever, you sit behind somebody for two hours, you really find out what's going on. But one of our subsidiaries has actually come up with a better program, and that is that they, they make their managers actually get on the phones for a full day and do the job that their people are doing. A full day a month, the managers must get on the phones and do the job. Not just for an hour or two, but for the entire day. And they learn so much, not only about what the customers think and are saying, but about what their staff are up against and why the IT system should be, should be improved and where our processes are, are going wrong. Fantastic program. We have two staff publications, one for business, one for the social side of work. Walkabouts, we encourage, really encourage our managers to walk about. In fact, one time, one of our senior managers gathered all his manager's chairs together, last them together in a circle, and they couldn't sit down all day. So they had to walk around. Exit interviews, people leave us, we want to know why. Appraisals, everybody gets an appraisal. Most of the managers do upward appraisals as well. And almost all the jobs are advertised internally. We like people moving around the organization. In short, we find it's almost impossible to over-communicate. Really, really almost impossible to do. Equality. Equality in our context is trying to remove the often painful, obvious divides between groups of people. There are differences between groups of people in the animal group, particularly with salaries. But the more obvious differences are not blatantly paraded in front of people. For instance, we go back to open plan. Everybody's sitting in the same desk and chair for the same job. So it's not like a manager has a huge desk and a non-manager has a small desk. They've got the same desk. No company cars. Been in an organization where they had company cars, horribly uh, divisive. Um, people with company cars versus people without, without. But even within the people with company cars, it's who's got the 316 and who's got the 325. Horrible. Parking places. Horrible. Same desk, the same job. Talked about that. Same chairs. I was in an organization where the managers had chairs with arms and the other staff had chairs without arms. And every once in a while, one of the manager chairs would go missing, it'd come back about three days later without the arms. <laughs> Managers work weekends, not every weekend, but we have a rota where we come in two, three, four times a year, something on that, on that order, and work a, a weekend day, because staff often have to work a weekend day. If they're gonna have to do it, we should have to do it by ourselves. It's, it just doesn't happen. Not surprisingly, the second message, we put all the pieces together. That's how it works best. That's how we see the big picture. Put all the pieces together. That's how it works. Teamwork. You got a problem? Talk it through. There's no shame in having a problem. Get out there and talk to people. The power of the group is almost invariably greater than the power of any single individual. Absolutely true. Um, reward, number three. Well, we have a history of, of sharing the wealth of the organization with staff. Management has always owned a piece of the business. But in, uh, towards the end of 1999, we teamed up with a venture capital company and we bought out the old majority owner. And at that time, we created a staff trust. And we were very fortunate that when we went public in September 2004, the staff trust crystallized and about 1,400 members of staff split up nearly 60 million pounds. That was a good day. Um, now we have new schemes to put shareholding back in the hands of staff. We have the, uh, the, the charter from shareholders to put 10% of the company, up to 10% of the company, into the hands of staff over, over a 10-year period. 
Now, the fact that the company is valued at nearly 3.5 billion, 10% being 350 million, that's a lot of wealth we can put back in the hands of staff. We have two programs. The main program goes to everybody. Every member of staff gets up to 3,000 pounds worth of shares a year. It takes three years before they, they vest. They get little dividends along the way. But they do pile up, and eventually they're like buses rolling in. Every, we give them out two, six, twice a year, 1,500 pounds each, each um, half year. And they roll in like buses every half year. Every member of staff gets this. Every member of staff gets exactly the same amount because every member of staff is important to that. Every member of staff has a role to play. And, a, and is a piece of that puzzle. Really important, and you can almost never underestimate how important you are to the people you manage. And so we encourage our managers, get out there, you know, say something nice to somebody, one person a day, make sure you say, good job, or that was a good call, or wow, you know, you did that well. Something positive. Last on the list is fun. I don't want to work right on it. I don't think anybody else does really either. So we go on our way to make it a nice environment. We have a ministry of fun, and they, they do uh, events and organize quizzes and contests and all sorts of geeky stuff. We have radios about and about. And for a call center environment, radios are often seen to be a bit strange. But one of our staff asked one day, can we have radios? We scratched our heads and said, radios. We tested to see if the customers were okay. Customers were fine. Have radios. Color walls. You know, all the walls were off-white. Somebody raised their hand again and said, can we paint the walls colors? Sure, paint the, paint the pillars, paint the walls. Fantastic change to the environment. Uh, a brilliant idea. Ed Roulette, one of our favorites. All the managers take part in this once a year. We get together and play Ed Roulette. Ed Roulette, you get six eggs, five are hard boiled. You reach in blind, and you take out an egg, and you crack it on your opponent's head. If it's hard boiled, they reach in the back, they take out an egg and crack it on your head. And you keep doing this until you find the one that's not hard boiled. And you keep going until there's only one left standing. But I gotta tell you, a hard boiled egg on the head hurts. <laughs> Make a wish come true. It's another one of our things we do uh, a couple times a year, where we open it up to staff, send us, you know, we didn't reason your wishes, and we'll see if we can make them come true. And we get people who say, you know, I wish I could have a taxi pick me up in the morning and take me home at night. So we'll put a taxi on for that person. We did have one guy whose wife also worked for us. We sent in and said, could you please give my wife two hours off in the afternoon so she can go home and iron my shirts? We, we, sent, we sent her a bouquet of flowers. 